All right, so why don't we get started? This is a conversation we're having with a longtime friend, uh, Dan Schmidt, and I have been uh, friends for a long time with Gene Meyer, uh, who has been for some 30 years, either president, executive director, CEO, always leader of uh, the Federalist Society. Uh, he's a keen, he has a keen understanding of conservatism and what I guess here I'll just call legal conservatism. We can get into both of those in a minute. Uh, and we're going to plunge the depths of your knowledge as fast as we can, Gene. And uh, as you know, sometimes Dan will do so, you know, uh, historically informed. Uh, so let's hope you're ready for that. And let's have a, a little so. fun. Uh, we'll have your bio uh, with other facts in it, uh, in the piece of which this video will be a part. So don't feel like I'm shortchanging you by not mentioning your uh, Intern, uh, the international chess master uh, status here, but maybe we can get to that uh, a little later as well. Uh, Gene's also on the board, we should say, of uh, the Sarah Scaife Foundation, relevant to readers of the Giving Review. Uh, so, all right, legal conservatism, uh, Gene, why has it been so successful? Well, a uh, couple things I'd say. One is it's been very successful in some ways and not so successful in others. Um, uh, but I think a lot of success it has had has been a function of sticking to ideas and to the principles that it, it cares about. The focus on ideas is key uh, to getting to getting things done in the long term and tends to be underrated in the uh, hurly burly of the political world. So, so to what degree has conservative philanthropy helped uh, achieve these successes, either in ideas or, or uh, other ways? I think you'd find, I think a lot, and I think you'd find that not only, and we'll get to this thing perhaps, but not only from conservative philanthropists uh, or people, but also from other people that what conservative philanthropy has done very well is it's focused on, on longer term trends, thoughts, ideas, whereas somewhat the more liberal philanthropies have tended to be very focused on shorter term, more immediate results. And I think the, you know, if it's done right, the longer term produces a lot more bang for the buck. I would say it's a, in passing, there's been all this complaint you constantly hear about all the well-funded conservatives out there. And in fact, there's a lot more money from the foundation world on, on the left philosophically and politically. But I think the Conservatives, by and large, have spent their money pretty well on the longer-term ideas. Isn't it? If I, if, you if I can ask, uh, this is the follow-up, Mike, excuse me. Uh, in that regard, uh, when the Federalist Society launched, uh, just prior really to Bradley's launching, uh, you had help at that time from Olin and, and a few others, uh, the imbalance on college campuses with respect to legal education in terms of sort of the ideological straitjacket Looking at what you, you just said about conservative philanthropy, uh, what, what's your sense overall, Gene, as to whether that balance is, has uh, a balance ha has been struck to a certain extent or whether we were there striking a balance and uh, given the sort of give and take of what happens in the public uh, square, the public arena, that uh, that balance may not be, uh, not, not, may, might not have been held so well. So what, what's your sense of, sort of that, that first objective and most important objective, redressing the balance and sort of where we are now with respect to that and how conservative philanthropy is done, Gene. Yeah, the last year is complicated, but the, let me start out. I think the, uh, I think the uh, we had partial success, but far from complete success in terms of the balance. We now have some professors, more than we used to have, who are sympathetic to Federal society is a broad, in a broad sense, um, but it's still very, very much a, 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 my, a minority. And it, and there's also, although conservative and libertarian ideas may have gotten a little bit stronger, radically left wing ideas have gotten a lot stronger. So there's been a, uh, as there has all, in some ways in society, a, you know, a, a, a weakening of the center in that regard. Um, on the other hand, we had very few students, I was talking about professors mostly, but in the student side, we've had very, we had very few students. We now have quite a lot of students. And I think it's fair to say that the federal side has the strongest extracurricular groups 
at most of the top 20 law schools and probably half the law schools in the country. Um, now, there are a lot of groups on the left, they're more, sc they're more scattered. Um, so I don't mean we're dominating the law schools or anything like that. But we do have very strong groups at a lot of law schools and get things heard that would not have been heard uh, yeah, uh, when, when, we, when we first started. In that way, there's been a lot of progress or a lot of improvement from our point of view. But uh, in terms of the schools overall, um, it's a somewhat mixed bag. And the last year is complicated both because of COVID, which hurts any organization that relies on getting together for meetings, but also because of the extreme radicalism of the left and the attempt to make it unacceptable not only to say things which we probably all view as, yeah, that's pretty outrageous. We don't think it should be suppressed, but it's pretty outrageous. But going on over to the idea that most of the people, for example, that Bradley funded or supported, most of those ideas the left would like to suppress and view as so racist or uh, uh, hostile to one group or another in one way or another, that they shouldn't be permitted on school, even though we'd probably all think most of those ideas are almost the reverse of what they claim. But, so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge recent change. Uh, good, thank you. Have any society chapters at law schools been quote unquote canceled? I mean, I know there's gonna be specific instances of professors, but uh, a chapter wide, apart from COVID, how there are you is, doing? There is, there have been a couple efforts, well, one specific effort undergo at, at a, one of the smaller law schools right now. Uh, and there have been efforts to make it so that we, you know, well, let's not participate. We've done a lot of, a lot of debates, as you know, including a lot of ones co-sponsored with left-wing groups and obviously using a lot of left-wing professors. And we think that's good, not only great for us, we think it's great for everyone on balance, including the left at the end of the day. You know, if their, idea, if their ideas are correct in a given area, it gets a chance to express them to a, a smart audience of conservatives and libertarians, and that should be good for them. And we get a chance to express their ideas to them. So that uh, there's increasing move on the part of the left in general to say, Nothing that we think is really important is debatable from the point of view of the left. I, I don't see how that works very well in the long run because I don't think that's the way to get the best and brightest of the, of the young. And I think a lot of people have a lot of doubts about it. But in the interim, uh, it's, it's something which I kind of think hurts everybody. And that's one, gonna be one of, our, one of our struggles as schools come back into session. Some of the things we faced will be even worse than they were when we when they left session because the left has moved that far. Yeah. So conservative philanthropy that is interested. Well, has is conservative philanthropy too tempted by short termism? Even though you said they successfully have sort of staved that off, uh, I'm not sure that's so true. The thinking of political, if a conservative philanthropist is interested in ideas. Uh, it's tougher for that person to hold off those who want money for political or more short-term uh, goals, isn't it, uh, than it used to be? Yes, I think it's tougher. I also think one of the reasons why it's important for conservative philanthropy looking more at the long term is because those ideas in general, not just from the foundations, are more difficult to fund and support. It is easier, relatively speaking, it's never easy, but it's easier to get support for political ideas. Um, I also think it's important because I think the long term ideas are even more important, although I certainly would say short term ideas matter too. Um, uh, and yes, I think, uh, I think there is a lot of, uh, you know, there is always pressure for any philanthropist, doesn't have to be conservative, always. Well, look, that's all very nice, but X is happening today. Yeah. And X is happening today uh, and Y will happen tomorrow and, and, and both matter. Uh, and, um, you know, so I think that's a, that's a constant a constant pressure. I, I do would distinguish between two things. I distinguish between short-term things and short-term and, and immediate funding. There's a lot to be said for the, um, at least some of the spend down type things that exist 
with some foundations. I'm not saying everything should do that, but there's a lot to be said for it, both because uh, you, you, if a way to be sure you spend the money the way you want to, um, and because uh, the longer term things require funding today, they just don't produce the results today. So then this is a, just a way to be difficult, I guess, but define long-term. Uh, Federal Society has been around for 30 years, has achieved some success. Some might say because there were policymakers in office to help, but, uh, but what do you mean when you say long-term? Uh, how long do I have to wait uh, if I'm? Um, you know, I mean, obviously it varies, but uh, I, think, uh, I think you should be looking, you should be comfortably prepared to look at least 10 years to the future in terms of what you're building. Uh, I'm not interested in somebody saying, well, this is really gonna change things in 50 years. It may, but that's in, in the real world too, too long. Um, and, and 10 years is arbitrary, but I, I, you know, it'll give you a sense of what I'm thinking. Certainly, certainly uh, you, know, you have to be looking five years out or you're, you're gonna miss a lot of critical opportunities. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we've talked about legal conservatism. How about, sorry, conservative legalism, legal. Uh, how about the liberals now? Do they have a apparatus up and going uh, that mimics the, the the one of which the Federal Society is a part? And uh, if so, how do you think it will do? Have the liberals learned anything from you? Well, one, they, their structures are different. And there is something about the views of the left that are more are less interested in process and more interested in short-term result. So they're always gonna have some pressures in, in, in that direction. Um, I think uh, they're six, you know, I do think though, as going back to the first question, there's a mixed question of success because I think the left has had, um, you know, the far left has had a lot of success with identity politics, um, which is not totally uh, unconnected to law. And uh, in that way, you know, they, they could say, look, you know, we've caused all this attention on all these various aspects of injustice and correcting the past and, and uh, trying to make it so that we change society in deep and fundamental ways. And, you know, I think it's hard to say, well, they, they, they haven't done any of that. That's completely wrong. I don't think it is completely wrong. I think they've, they've had some success. Um, I think they have learned, um, uh, yeah, you know, it's tricky because I mean we learn from the left too. I mean, I cer certainly think uh, uh, a, a quite a number of the things that the, they did we 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 learned from over time, and they they obviously learned from us too. But I don't think they are um, so. Uh, uh, I I I don't know that what they would say and what they would think about how their identity politics processes have, have developed. And I, I, I think it's, um, uh, it's weird because in some ways they lost a lot of shorter term battles in spite of their interest in, in, in the short term. Um, clearly, you know, in, in the legal area, clearly the courts were not, have not been a success for them at all. Um, but they are trying to restructure things so that doesn't matter so much. Um, and you know, there's an argument for saying things should go more into the political side and less into the legal side. Some of the ways in which we're doing that, I, you know, I think they're doing that, I think is are, 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 are a problem. But, uh, um, you know, and, you know, we have the enormous complication that the nature of politics has changed for a whole bunch of reasons, not the least of which, of course, was, uh, was President Trump. Um, and, um, you know, there's, I, I think at this stage, the focus on ideas becomes even more important because there's so much turmoil and ideas don't control everything, but they are a base. And if you don't have that base in good shape, you're unlikely to reach good results. Well, great. Why don't we, uh, finish off with part one there and then pick up on part in part two on, uh how to build that base, rebuild that base, restore that base, whatever the term might be. So, okay, stick with us, everybody.